Hi, I'm Nick Nadi, Senior Vice President of Sales at ICAR, and I'm delighted to release this ISAAC, or Industry Segment Advisory Council, driving the conversation roundtable to discuss ICAR's Enhanced Professional Development Program, or PDP. I'd like to note that this roundtable was recorded in 2018 in preparation for launch of the Even Better ICAR Enhancements. The recorded roundtable remains as timely and relevant as ever, a driving force in all the effort that went into our launch. As you may know, our Isaacs are comprised of individuals from various segments of our industry, offering a true voice of the customer into ICAR programs and services. The panelists featured in this roundtable represent some of our Collision Repair Isaac members, offering some great insights and perspective on the new PDP enhancements from their unique points of view. You all talked about uh, you know the reasons to do this now. Um, our next question really gets to the core of that, um, and, and maybe the answers that you guys provided on this last question uh, fit the answers to this question as well. Um, and, and the question is, uh, you know, what factors or variables do you believe are, are at the core uh, driving the need for these changes? Uh, you know, obviously technical tsunami complexity of repair, um, was there one or many uh, tipping points to, to bring about these changes for you? I mean, we, we spent just a, a lot of time talking about what would drive these changes in our professional development program, changes in training in general uh, needed in the industry. Um, probably, uh, you know, some of those meetings were longer than others, and, and some specifically uh, were three days long, uh, and I think we had a few of those. Uh, and, and again, I appreciate you guys being with us for that time. But again, any any one thing, or there were there several tipping points uh, to bring about these changes. Uh, and you know, if if there were, uh, you know, why that change, uh, and, and why now? Why uh, why bring about this now? And, and again, I I recognize the fact that uh, training needs to happen in the industry. Uh, if there's anything else you can add, uh, you know, Bill, how about, how about you on this question? I'm conflicted about this question, but for me, there were a couple things. And one thing was, as you know, ICAR Gold Class has been around for a long time. And for a lot of us who have spent time since the beginning of training with ICAR and being Gold Class, some of us felt like that the I ICAR Gold Class wasn't feeling like it was the best of the best, like it had been intended to be from the beginning. And um, with all the changes and all the things going on, it felt like with some of the things and the way that it was um, set up to be, that it wasn't that way. So, you know, I think we were due for a change. There are a lot of things that were going on in gold class that uh, weren't beneficial for everyone. Uh, people were taking training that really weren't doing work. Uh, there were all kinds of things going on. So I think, you know, an involvement of PDP was needed in order for it to be better for people to have, you know, come back to it. Uh, and the amount of technology that was coming up and not having the training for it was so desperately needed and it was being overlooked. Not by ICAR, but just as an industry, we weren't getting enough widespread training for these things that we needed for these new things that we're working on. Yeah, good point. Good point. Mark, how about you? Any one thing or multiple uh, things uh, that brought about the tipping point here for the changes needed in, in, our, uh, in our training, ICAR training? Yeah, I think that uh, us as a whole, as an industry, we're harder on ourselves than uh, and wanted more for our employees and what uh, we're doing than uh, what we were doing before. Uh, by the changes that we're making in uh, um, making it harder to become gold class and more qualified, if you will, by having uh, more, uh, if you will, uh, accountability in how many staff members are trained on your staff, uh, heart, a higher higher staffing uh, for your collision repair, or for uh, structural technicians, I should say. I mean, stuff like that is 
is integral in, in getting the, the best quality product out there and the safest product. And uh, by having one person be able to fill all the roles in, uh, in the past and uh, now making these changes, um, I think that's making the shops better and more accountable. And I think that it'll, it'll uh, make it uh, gold class mean something to the other people in the industry as far as OEs and the consumers. Great point, Mark. Uh, yeah, and we hope that happens and the training is taken not just for the sake of meeting a requirement, but based on the need uh, in the industry for that, that technical training. Amber, how about you? Any tipping point, any one single thing or multiple things? Well, I mean, I think that there's a couple of factors, a um, couple of things that we've seen in the industry as a whole over the last, especially the last like three to five years. Um, and I think the um, OEM's involvement in the industry and their, you know, kind of um, uh, develop me, developing of their own training programs has really opened a lot of shop operators like myself, our eyes open to how little um, information, how little access to information we've had in the past and how difficult it is to get that information. And I think that, um, you know, we, we're seeing, which is, is, is great, you know, this kind of demand for information from the industry. And that signals that, you know, my opinion, that that's a positive. It's that a lot of people are saying, hey, we want to do it right. How, how do we do it right? Um, but again, I mean, from, from just in, in most of the OE programs, you know, you elect one or two techs and, and you have one or two people that are trained and it might not be, you know, financially or even available to, to train the rest of your team. Um, and so, you know, there's a real, there's a real, um, kind of a gap there. I mean, you'll have two techs in a shop of 30 that actually have training um, or have, you know, been provided that access to information to the level that um, may require them to, to work on today's cars. And I think that the tipping point is we're starting to, to see that and recognize that and acknowledge that, hey, you know, we, we need more. And again, I mean, going back to to icar seeing that and saying hey you know let's get the shops involved the people that are out there in the trenches involved in this conversation i i think is you know it's it's been it's been awesome but for me for me that would be that that is probably the biggest contributor of of why now these these changes are are needed and, and are so important how true and, and tim i think you brought it up uh, you know, recent litigation that we've seen out in the industry, uh, you know, ICAR training has, has virtually exploded over the past, you know, 18 to 24 months. Uh, anything else you can add to, to the comments uh, so far about, uh, you know, a single thing or uh, multiple things causing the need for these changes? Well, I, I think it would mirror a lot of things that have already been said, uh, but my belief going back several years ago was that I can't train my employees to the minimum standard anymore. I, I can't have just one structural tech, one non-structural painter, uh, that I need to have all of my staff trained and Amber kind of related to that too. Uh, so I, I think some of the new programs that ICAR is rolling out will help facilitate more people in your center being trained. So I think that's gonna be very, very good. And I've heard that there's one insurer out there that is even giving incentives within their program if you have a higher level of training. 100%, I, I don't, off the top of my head, have it, but 100% of your uh, structural technicians trained as opposed to one or two, uh, that they're gonna be doing some incentives on some of their programs. So uh, I think that's a sign that maybe the industry is embracing training past that minimum standard at this point. Yeah, very very true, we do see that. I mean, that's that's been happening. Uh, over the past couple of years, and it's gratifying to see that. Um, 